I started using desktop Linux full time back in 2008. And over the years, I've noticed that there are just not that many Debian based distributions that base off of Debian's unstable branch, at least not now. A few years back, it, it was there were a couple of distributions that did base off of Debian SID. SID is Debian's unstable branch. There was Apto SID and there was Seduction. And both of those distributions just kind of died. Apto SID died many years back. I don't think they've had a release in seven or eight years or something. It's been a long time since I've seen anybody mention Apto SID. Seduction had a release right when I started my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel started about three years and three months ago, something like that, and Seduction put out a new release shortly after I began this YouTube channel, and I made a video about that release, and they never had a release since. Well, that was true until last week. <laughs> they put out a new ISO finally. I actually, I was shocked because I assumed Seduction was essentially a dead project. I don't think anybody thought that Seduction was ever going to have another release, but they put out a new ISO, and because of that, I'm pretty excited about this, because I am a big fan of Debian, and I'm a big fan of trying to make Debian work as a rolling release distribution, although most people that use Debian use the stable branch, because that's really why you use Debian, is for that stability. You know, I, I like to live a little bit on the edge, so a lot of times I do point the repos to the unstable branch on Debian, and I think seduction is a great way to get into Debian Unstable because it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you up front. You don't have to worry about changing apt mirrors or anything like that because it's already this way out of the box, right? It's already set up to be Debian Unstable. So I went and grabbed this ISO for Seduction 21.1.0. I grabbed their KDE Plasma Edition. They offer a few different ISOs. They offer one for GNOME and one for LXDE, which is kind of weird. LXDE is no longer under active development, but they still do the old LXDE desktop environment. But I always check out LXDE because I'm a big fan of OpenBox. OpenBox is the window manager for LXDE. So I wanted to do something a little different, you know, something that's not so obvious for me so I, I don't often check out KDE Plasma so we're gonna do seduction their plasma edition here inside vert manager and we have the boot menu here and I'm just gonna go ahead and get into the live environment assuming this boots up correctly and now that we're in the live environment, what I want to do before I run through the installation, let me see if I can blow up the screen resolution a little bit because the uh, screen resolution isn't taking up the full 1920 by 1080 resolution of my monitor. So I'm going to run a xrander here in the terminal. I'm going to do xrander space dash s for set 1920 by 1080. Well, I'm assuming that 1920 by 1080 is available for us, and it is. Now that we have a proper screen resolution, I'm going to go ahead and click Install System here, and it will fire up the Calamares installer, and just very quickly I'm going to rush through this installation. The first screen asks for our language, American English, is selected by default, and that's fine for me. I'm going to click Next. We can read about the release notes. I'll skip that, so I'm just going to click Next. Our time zone, I'm in the central time zone in the U.S., and that is what has been selected for me. It's selected Chicago in the U.S. for me. That's fine. And then our keyboard, English US, has been selected. That's fine for me. And then the next thing is our partitions. We can either give Seduction the entire 20 gig virtual hard disk that I created in this virtual machine, or I can choose manual partitioning and partition the drives myself. I'm just going to go ahead and do the automatic partition and uh, let Seduction have the entire 20 gig virtual hard drive. Do I want to create a swap? I don't like creating swaps in virtual machines because it's just wasted space unless they offer a swap file because the swap partitions are just too big. Again, it's wasted space, but they do offer the option to create a swap file. So I will do the swap file. Then I'm going to click next. We need to create our username and password. My username is going to be DT. My host name for this computer, I'll say vert, dt-vert for virtual machine. For a password, let's create a strong and complicated password for privacy reasons. So let me create a strong and complicated password. And then we need to create a password for the administrator account, the sudo account. Or what you could do is just toggle 
that checkbox right there, use same password for the administrator account. And that's what I would do. That way you don't have to remember two different accounts. The, the password for your user, in my case, DT, is the same password for sudo. And then I'm going to click next. We get a summary. We can review our location, keyboard, partition scheme. Everything looks good. I'm going to click install and it's going to warn me it's about to format the drive and write to the disk. I'm going to click install now. And away it goes. This portion of the installation typically takes about five to ten minutes on my machine. I'll be back uh, once the installation has completed. And the installation has completed. And with the Calamaris installer, once the installation has completed, what you need to do is make sure this checkbox is ticked that says restart now. Those of you doing this on physical hardware, this is where you unplug the USB stick up on reboot and what I need to do is I actually need to detach the ISO from the VM on reboot which I did not do so it's actually going to try to run through the installation again so in a VM what you would need to do is well first I'm going to shut down the VM I'm just going to go ahead and force this to shut down and here in vert manager I need to go in here and tick off the SATA CD-ROM that's it's booting off the ISO the ISO this uh, the CD-ROM there in that case and now I'm going to force it to boot off the hard disk. The hard disk, of course, is where we actually installed Seduction. And now restart that. I get back into full screen. And this is our freshly installed Seduction 21.1.0 KDE Plasma. And it looks like it's booting up just fine. It actually booted up very quickly. Now let me give my username and our super secure password. And let's log in. And it may take a second. And once again, I'll probably have to go in here and change the screen resolution. I could do that with XRender again, just because I happen to know, you know, the XRender command in the terminal. It works on any desktop environment for the, those that want to do it through the traditional graphical application in KDE Plasma. I'm not sure where it's at because I don't use Plasma that much, but I'll get into the menu here and I'll search for the word uh, display if I can type correctly. So D-I-S-P-L-A-Y. There we go. Uh, couldn't type there. Display configuration sounds right. And let me go in here and change to 1920 by 1080 and hit apply. All right. And that works just as well, too. All that is really is just a graphical front end to XRender. So whether you do it in the terminal or whether you get the GUI application up and, and changing it that way, it's really the same either way. Now let me get my head out of the way here so you guys can see the wallpaper. The wallpaper is quite nice. We have some branding here, Seduction, which is the community-based OS. <laughs> so it is a community distribution, of course. And we also have C-Blues. Now C-Blues is the code name for this release of Seduction. So 21.1.0, the code name C-Blues. Now one thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and fire up the terminal here. This is console with a K, KDE's console. Let me zoom in here. And this was released about seven or eight days ago. Normally, I wouldn't worry about doing an update, but because this is based on Debian SID, the unstable branch, the rolling release branch, there are probably some updates because seven or eight days is a long time on a rolling release. So I'm going to do a sudo apt, if I can type update, and an sudo apt upgrade. And let's give our super secure password DT is not in the sudoers file. So this is one of those distributions that instead of using sudo, just switch over to SU. So let's switch over to SU, give the root password. And now we just need to do a apt update and and apt upgrade. And it's going to go ahead and sync the repositories, and then give us a very long list of applications that have an upgrade. 183 applications need an upgrade. I'm going to go ahead and take the upgrade before continuing with the video, just in case there were any bugs upon release. You know, this hopefully will fix that problem. And at the end of that upgrade, I get this screen here saying that there was a new kernel involved with that update and the new kernel will not be loaded automatically you need to reboot the machine of course to load a new kernel that that should be common sense to most people um i'm not sure why it's asking me about restarting daemons uh, i'm probably going to restart every daemon though because i'm going to do the suggested sudo reboot so let me go ahead and i don't need to do sudo because i'm already logged in as su so i just need to type reboot here 
and I've rebooted the machine after the update. And let's go ahead and take a look at what is pre-installed in Seduction's Plasma Edition. So if I get into the menu system here, uh, we have various subcategories here. There's a development category. There's really not much here. Under the graphics category, we have quite a bit installed. We have Conversine. I'm not sure what program that is. It's not one I've ever come across, I don't think. Let me do the about. This is the Batch Image Converter and Resizer. Okay, well, that's a, a nice little image tool. Uh, you also have Digicam. You have Flameshot. Flameshot is going to be your screenshot utility. Digicam, of course, is the webcam utility. Uh, GNU Image Manipulation Program, GIMP, of course, is our free and open source alternative to proprietary solutions like Adobe Photoshop. And it's taking a minute here to launch GIMP here in Seduction. And it's actually taking quite a long time to, to load up GIMP here. Now, this is a VM, so uh, that could be the issue. But usually GIMP starts uh, pretty fast, even in these VMs. This is GIMP 2.10.22. Uh, I love GIMP. I use GIMP actually to create all the artwork for the, the channel, the channel header, and all my thumbnails on YouTube and library. Under the graphics category, we have GwenView. I believe GwenView is KDE's image viewer. Let's go to about GwenView. Uh, GwenView 20.12.1. And back to the menu system here under graphics. A lot of graphics programs. Image Magic, which is a, a command line utility that is, it's used in the back end of most of these programs here. Inkscape is another image program, kind of like GIMP, except GIMP is used for raster based graphics, and Inkscape is used for scalable vector graphics. So if I go to about Inkscape here, this is Inkscape 1.0.2, Inkscape. Widely considered one of the best free and open source programs on the planet. It's really fantastic. Also under the graphics category, we have Color, Paint, LibreOffice Draw, Ocular. I believe Ocular is KDE's PDF viewer. Let me go to the About version 20.12.2 here. Let me close that out and go back into the graphics category. And Xsane is also here. Xsane, I believe, is a scanning utility. I don't have a scanner, though, hooked up to my computer, so it's not going to find anything here. Let's see if I can close that out. Okay, well, let's get back into the menu system under Internet. Man, they have a ton of stuff installed by default on Seduction. I really wasn't expecting to have so many programs installed out of the box. Under Internet, we have Aggregator. Aggregator with a K. That's one of the KDE programs. This is an RSS feed reader, a really nice RSS feed reader. Uh, because it's already installed, I wouldn't swap it out for something else. Aggregator's uh, perfectly fine. For a web browser, Firefox is here. And let's see what version of Firefox we're on. Being a rolling release distribution, you would expect this to be the absolute latest Firefox. This is Firefox 85.0.1. So yeah, the absolute latest Firefox. Also under the internet category, we have IRC. And that's all it says is IRC. It doesn't say anything else. So I'm not sure what program it's going to open. It opens Conversation with a K. That's KDE's IRC client. And does it automatically connect us to like the Seduction IRC channel? Uh, I'm just going to wait and see. Yeah, it does. It automatically logs you in to hashtag seduction over at irc.oftc.net. So I guess that's the official seduction support channel there. So I, I love it when distributions do that. It just makes getting quick support uh, just very easy, especially for new users that maybe don't know how to use IRC. Also under Internet, just very quickly, KDE Connect is here. That's to sync uh, mobile devices to your computer. KGit is here. That's a, a download manager. Kmail is an email client. Uh, it, it's an okay email client, I guess, but most people, if you're already installing Firefox and using Firefox as your browser, you're probably just going to go ahead and use Mozilla Thunderbird as well. This is Kmail 5.15.3. Another great free and open source browser, it just became fully free and open source, is Mailspring. I talked about Mailspring on a video about a week ago, and uh, that's probably the one I would recommend these days if you're looking for a really great, slick, modern email client. Also under the internet category we have ktorrent which is kde's torrent client 
They have the uh, sieve editor and some SSH stuff. Under multimedia, we have the Dragon Player. Let's open the Dragon Player and about Dragon Player. Dragon Player version 20.12.0. And this, of course, is going to be your video player, your multimedia player. You can see you have play file, play disc, play stream. Of course, I don't have any video in this VM to play, but if you've seen one video player, you've seen them all. Also under multimedia, we have Elisa, which I believe is a, a plasma music player. Never actually used Elisa myself. Uh, it's a kind of a new program. I first saw it pop up on the screen, like on my radar, about a year ago. I was starting to see distributions ship with the Elisa music player. I don't know much about it. I've never personally used it. Also under multimedia, we have Juke. I don't know what Juke is. This is J-U-K. Uh, let's see about Juke version 20.12. This is a jukebox and music manager by the KDE community. So I guess this is where you could edit like uh, your audio files as far as the metadata, you know, track name, artist, genre, things like that. That would be a useful program for people that are serious audio files and you have a very large music uh, collection. I have a ton of music on my machine. I have like 130 gigabytes of music actually stored on my uh, main production machine here. I, I might play around with Juke and, and see what that's about. K3B is a fantastic disc burning utility. I know most people don't burn CDs and DVDs anymore, but if you do, K3B is probably the best one available on Linux. Also under multimedia, we had Caffeine, MPV Media Player, which MPV, I'm sure is the back end to Dragon Player. It's probably also the back end to SM Player. So three different movie players, if you will. Uh, I don't know why they ship so many, but hey, you got three of them to choose from. Voco Screen, I believe is your webcam program here and I, I don't have a camera that's going to work inside the VM so nothing to see there. We do have an office category under the office category looks like we have the entire LibreOffice suite uh, as well as contact with a K, K organizer, K mail, you know er everything you expect to be in an office category. Just very quickly, there's a science and math category. There's nothing in it. LibreOffice math. Uh, there's a settings category. There's really nothing here other than the system settings, which is your control panel, basically. This is where you get all the KDE control settings, everything in one screen. I'll leave that up because we'll come back to it in a second. Also under settings, we had the synaptic package manager. So you have to give your root password. This is your graphical way of installing and removing software in Debian and most Debian based systems, the Synaptic Package Manager. It's a fantastic little tool. Uh, me personally, I just do everything at the command line in the terminal because it's very easy to apt update, apt upgrade, apt install, name a program, apt remove, name a program. But if you are not sure what you're looking for, maybe you want to search for something, sometimes it's easier to do that kind of thing in a graphical program like Synaptic. For example, I wanted to search for a new email client, an alternative to KML, but I don't know <laughs> what's available as far as what the program names are. Well, I'll just do a search for email. And it's going to search the names and the descriptions of every program in the Debian repository and return them here. And I could go here and, and I could search for an email client. Uh, you know, I, I could just read the descriptions here and find something that sounds like it, it, it would work for me. For example, Geary. And the, Geary is a fantastic little email client. I could tick that box right next to it and it's going to ask me to mark for installation. I'm going to click mark for installation. It's going to show me all the packages it's going to install because Geary has some dependencies. And then I click mark one more time and then it's ready to install. All I got to do is click apply. Once I click apply and apply, there you go. And it's installing Geary and all its dependencies and it will appear in the menu system once this installation has completed. All right, let me close that. So that's the Synaptic Package Manager. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, every Debian-based distribution should ship it by default. Some don't, but really it should be there. If I go back to the Internet category now, I will find the Geary email client here. And just to, let me go ahead and open it so I can show you guys that it actually did install it. 
under the system settings here in KDE, this is where you could change your theme. Uh, it looks like by default, our theme is called Sea Blues. You have, of course, your standard Breeze and Breeze Dark, which are the standard uh, KDE Plasma themes. I like Breeze Dark, actually, so I'm going to apply that. Of course, if I do a dark theme, we need to change the wallpaper, so I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to right click on the desktop and configure desktop and wallpaper. Let's find a light colored wallpaper. Uh, let's see what we want. Well, there's some nice little Debian artwork here. Uh, that's a nice wallpaper, but still not light enough. We really want something really light to contrast against our black theme. Now that would work there. Yeah, that that works just fine. Let me open up Dolphin, which is KDE's file manager, so you can see the plasma theme, the really black plasma theme. I like the blue icon set as well against that really nice abstract art wallpaper. That's one of the default plasma wallpapers there. One thing I do want to do is let's open up a terminal one more time and let me zoom in because I do want to check our kernel version. Now I just did that fresh update as soon as I installed. This is about eight days after release and we are currently on kernel 5.10.17 which is the absolute latest kernel but again being a rolling release distribution depending on when you guys install it you're going to be on even newer kernels. The other thing I wanted to do was let's run htop and right now we are using almost no CPU, not surprising, we're not doing anything, but we're using 1.2 gigs of the four gigs I've gave this VM. That's very, very high. That's extremely high for KDE Plasma. So something's going on here. And what's going on? Well, just looking at the sys tray down here, I've got some things going on. Aggregator is still running. Let's kill it. We also have, is that Juke or, it's one of the media players. Yeah, no, that was Juke. Let's get rid of that. And already we went from 1.25 gigs down to 1.05 gigs. So we've got some stuff in the background running that's kind of uh, spiking that RAM usage a little bit. That's a little high. I should have checked that on a, a fresh reboot. Plasma, though, typically uses about 400 megs of RAM. The other thing I want to do is I want to do a apt list to get all the packages that are in the repositories dash dash installed. I want to see all the packages that are installed on the system. So, uh, of course, that it just spits it out in a gigantic list. What we want to do is take that apt list dash dash installed and then do the pipe symbol. Pipe that into this command line program WC for a word count. And I want a word count space dash L for a line. I really want a line count. How many lines is this list? That will tell me how many packages are in that list. 2,623. So not an, an, an unbloated system, right? There's a million programs installed on this system. 2,623. And that's not shocking because just looking at the menu system, I was very surprised. I mean, that's a ton of graphics programs. That's a ton of internet programs, some multimedia programs and everything. So they definitely installed a very large suite of software on seduction and that's okay I don't mind distributions that do that because there's plenty of minimal distributions so it's good to have some distributions out there that ship everything in the kitchen sink you know already installed especially if you're gonna put this on a machine maybe that's not gonna be connected to the internet so you're not gonna have the ability to install software yourself it's nice that some of these distributions just have everything already on it all in all, you know, it's, it's a very nice desktop. The KDE Plasma is always attractive and essentially under the hood, it's Debian. It's Debian's unstable branch, Debian SID, and it's an easy way to install Debian SID because if you want to do Debian, like real Debian, and then switch over to the SID branch, what you need to do is install Debian stable and then change out, out all the apt mirrors, you know, to point to the SID repositories. And that, that's not hard or anything. But Seduction makes this very easy because you have this nice graphical installer using the Calamari's installer. It installed in like five minutes, right? I didn't have to change any mirrors or anything. It already came with the desktop environment I wanted because they offer ISOs. Let me check this. They offer ISOs for Cinnamon, Gnome, Plasma, LXDE, LXQT, 
Mate and XFCE. So, you know, like eight different ISOs with your desktop environment of choice. I'm really happy that Seduction finally had a new release after three years. I was really concerned that the project was dead. I'm still concerned that the project may be dead. The fact that it took three years for this release. I mean, are the people that worked hard on this release going to continue working on the project? There's, of course, no guarantees, you know, but it's one of those things that with Linux distributions, there's a million of them out there. You know, it's like I tell people all the time, I'm not married to any of them, right? I love Arch. I love Arco. I love Manjaro, you know, all the Arch-based distributions. But let's say Arch and every Arch based distribution on the planet disappeared tomorrow. <laughs> could I run Seduction or Debian or Ubuntu or Mint or Fedora or Gentoo? Yes, I could, right? <laughs> because I'm not married to any of them because at the end of the day, under the hood, they're all Linux. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Absy, Dallas, Devin, Fran, Gabe, Lou, Corbini, and Mitchell, Alan, Akami, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, David, The Other, David, Donnie, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Pick, VM, Scott, Wes, and Willie. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. And they are the producers of this quick first look at the recently released Seduction 21.1.0. This episode is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen, as well, all these names you're seeing on the screen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because the DistroTube channel is sponsored by the community. I don't have any corporate sponsors. If you'd like to help me out, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Now we just need a new release from Crunchbang. <laughs>